Hello and welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. Now, here are your lead pastors. For more information, visit us at livingwordonline.com. Amen. Amen. So here is this. When I show you this picture, what do you think of? <laughs> Say it, everybody. So now, Gen X and above all knows what that is, right? That's, that's norm. And so if you're not Gen X or, or above, uh, you would not know. And that's from a show called Cheers. And as soon as Norm would come into this, this bar, which was, uh, you know, kind of a place where everybody knows your name. It was, a, it was a sign of almost like family. You walk in, everybody knows your name. Gets you. And I've kind of found that everybody's looking for that. Do you know each one of us are looking for a place of belonging, a place of purpose, a place of meaning? And you might have that in your physical family or you might not have that in your physical family, but yet it seems like there's still a longing, no matter what your actual family situation is, a greater place to belong in the community at large. You know, I remember growing up just, you know, looking for that place of purpose, of meaning. I really attached to my football team that I was a fan of which was the Cleveland Browns. So, you know, my upbringing was really rough. <laughs> it, was a, it was just because the Browns always struggled. My whole life, they've struggled. But we wear the jerseys and we wear the things to try to say, I belong. I'm a part of this group. I'm a part of this family. And, you know, we're looking for all those things. We're looking to belong. We're looking for a place of purpose, meaning to, to accelerate who we are and to be all that God's called us to be. You know, and We moved out here in 1984 from Ohio, and when we moved out here, we just had four of us. That was it. Back home in Ohio, we had my mom's side, a large side, a large Italian side over there, and then my dad's side. They were English and German. They had a long, a big side over there, and we'd always get together, have a lot of fun and and all that kind of stuff. When we came out here, it was just us four. It was my brother and I, mom and dad. And so I kind of grew up with kind of a, a feeling of a deficit when it came to family a little bit. You know... March 24th, 1994 is my spiritual birthday. That's when I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And what I should say is that's when Jesus found me. <laughs> we talk about being saved and I got saved and all this, but really it has nothing to do with really us as much as it did that I wasn't looking for God. God found me, brought me into his family, and he saved me and redeemed me. And just to let you know a little bit about that, I don't talk about it a lot. At the time, I was in my late teen years, and I, was, uh, I, I got messed up, on, uh, addicted to drugs and some different things like that, led me astray. I uh, ended up in rehab for a little while, and the weird thing about that is that I didn't want to go there. After, actually, my, my parents had me, they put me in that facility. And it kind of awakened me to some things needed to change, but in t- you know, I have my birthday tomorrow, but my spiritual birthday is the most important birthday, March 24th. 1994, that's the day that I was translated into from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love, amen? So I I moved there into that place and it was just different. And see, soon as we came to, as soon as I came to Jesus, the thing is, is he didn't just save me because we talk about salvation a lot, but he placed me in a family and he placed me, it was a living word. That's where I was brought. Uh, my, my parents were there, and I really wasn't serving God. At times, they would kind of force me, try to get me there. But um, at the time, then after I got saved, I knew I wanted to grow in this relationship with God. And so I went to church. And that's really where it all happened. That's where the magic happened. That's really where I went from glory to glory. I started to understand who I was. I started to understand my calling. I started to understand what it means. I mean, as soon as our family got planted in a church, we kind of were around and then, and we were kind of bouncing around in places and then God brought us to Living Word and it was like home. It was like, and we went to church with our heart, if you know what I mean. So our heart was invested into the church and the church had invested their heart into us. There's a transaction or a relationship there. That's how family works, by the way. When everybody's contributing, you have a happy home. I don't know if you got some teenagers at home that don't know how to maybe clean up their room. You're like, get in here and contribute to the family. And that's good. You want everybody contributing because that makes things really happy. 
And so um, and that day when I came to the, as I started to grow in the church, I started to understand my place of purpose and our family went to new places. Our finances started to change immediately. Uh, the understanding of our calling and destiny and our purpose, even as a family and us also individually, but together as a family, that came into focus. I met somebody at church and it's my wife, Christy. I'm more on that in just a moment. But I met somebody there. The best place to find your mate is in church, somebody, amen. Don't even play with the idea of marrying somebody outside of the body of Christ. I'm just going to tell you, don't play with fire. You're about to be burned. You want to find God's person for you, and I promise you this, you will find them in church. And you, the cool thing about the, the understanding of church and, and, and purpose and meaning, and I understood that God had called me to be a pastor. I didn't know how it would work. Actually, early on when I first went to Living Word, I wanted to be a part of the church family and, and be a part of what was going on so much. I just I was drawn to it. I was just like, show me what to do. I'll, I'll take any job. Any, and I was just taking care of the building. That's all I wanted to do and just happy doing it. And God used that as a place of purpose and meaning and took me to new place. We're all looking for family. You know, there's this idea that blood's thicker than water, but there's something more thick than blood, and that's spirit. Spirit's thicker than blood. What I mean is this. I don't know what your physical family's like, but even if you have a great physical family, your blood family, there's a family that you can belong to that has even a stronger bond. Amen, somebody. It's a stronger bond that is built in the spirit, and I like to say that spirit is thicker than blood. Can I get some praise in this place? Spirit's thicker than blood. And when you think about spirit being thicker than blood, that's the idea of this relationship that's built in the Holy Spirit. And they feed you and you feed them. And all of this happens in the context of the church. You know, I can be in an airport somewhere. I meet someone from a totally different part of the world, a totally different state or whatever. And as soon as we find out that we're believers together, there's an immediate bond in the spirit. There's a connection there. And sometimes you're even just talking to somebody and you're like, something's different about you. Do you go to church somewhere? And they say, yeah. I go, oh, I knew there was something weird. Like I knew we were kin before I even asked you if we're kin. Like you just, you just feared there's spiritual family. And see, there's this verse in Psalm 92. And this is the verse of the year for us here in 2022. Our verse is this. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, that's the church, because Jesus said, my, my house will be a house of prayer. He said he calls this physical house. He calls it his house. Why? Is, this is where his family is. This is where his family is. This is where we gather together. And it says, those who are planted, that means you have your roots growing down deep into the soil of your church that God's, it's your family where God's placed you. And those roots go down deep and they supply you spiritually and in every part of your life with nutrients. They supply you with everything you need every day to be strong, to be fruitful, to have the kind of life, the abundant life that God's called you and I to, amen? amen. See, that comes from being a part of the church and allowing your roots to go down deep into the soil of God's house. And see, the, the funny thing about the roots is that it's, it's there to be able to also stabilize you when you go through a tough time. When you go through, a brother is born for adversity is what it says in Proverbs. And so what that means is that there's a, there's a time where you grow your roots down deep so that when the trouble comes, you've got a family surrounding you. Your roots are already deep down in there. It's hard to get those roots to grow real quick. That's why we need the family of God. We need to invest in the family. We need to be planted and rooted. That verse continues to say in Psalm 92, 13, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. Somebody say flourish. flourish. Now that's a promise right there. It says, if you're planted and if you're rooted in God's house, that means you're a contributing member to the family. And, and the cool thing about church is it's about relationship. You say, what's the difference? I can stay home today and just, you know, I can, I can um, you know, watch some different people preaching. I can, I can stay home today and maybe read my Bible. But isn't it funny 
that when the church was gathered together in the upper room, the Holy Spirit was poured out as they were assembled together in one place. See, that happens in the context of relationship and communication with one another. Unless we have that built deeply into the fiber of who we are as Christians. Why do you think 2020 happened? Why do you think the enemy fueled the virus to come in and kill, steal, and destroy? Where's one of the places, and, and, and I've had this come up recently at a pastor's meeting. We were talking about all the different things happening in churches, and, and, and it came to my turn, and I talked about how's things at your church. I said, great. <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? Aren't you guys like cleared out of people? So I go, no. I go, our attendance has been pretty good. Everything's been stable and strong. People have been rooted, and they've been planted in the house, and we're bearing fruit because of it. You saw it in the video, amen? amen. You saw it right there. That's a testament to you to being planted, to being rooted, amen, down deep. And then when the adversity and the trouble comes, so many of you, I've seen this over the years, where you, because of your church, you can call on your church family. You're there when, when things are going awry in your own life, you're able to lean in to the body of Christ. Some of us say, well, I just like to just communicate. It's just me and God, like just me and God on the side of a mountain and we just talk. That's cool, but you're not getting the fullness of Christ. You might be dealing with the head, but you don't have the body. That's why Jesus literally said, the church is the body of Christ. It's the fullness of who he is. And we need it. And right to the live stream, and you that are watching on the podcast, we love that you're a part of that. And, and when you can't be here, we want you in there. We do. But we want you more so to be connected physically here. We want you to be a part of this on a regular basis. And we want to stay connected as much as we can all week long. And there are times and seasons we go through where we can't. That's why we have that. And when you're away, we have that so you can stay connected. But we want you to get in here. Nothing will replace, ever replace the fullness of the body of Christ in relationship and family that happens between you and I week in and week out right here. Can I get some praise, man? Let's go. Psalms 1-3. Well, and you say, why? What? what does that all mean? Well, it's all about discipleship. Jesus didn't tell us to go get people saved. You know, for, as far as back as I can remember, my dad always and my mom taught, you got, when you're inviting people or talking to, about Jesus, go invite them to church. They're going to hear the word of God, and then they're in perfect position to be planted in the house. As soon as they get saved, they're already there. Because I know there are times that people get saved, but they don't get planted in the family. They don't get planted in the church. See, Psalms 1-3 says something really powerful. It says that when we are planted in God's word, in God's house, we'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You know, when you're driving from, from Phoenix up to up north, you're, you're going to see on the 17. That's a beautiful drive, isn't it? You're going to see on the 17 all the way up. Off to the side, you'll notice the desert. And then every once in a while, you're going to see this little green path of trees, and it kind of cuts through the desert you're like, what is that? I don't understand. And what that is, is the foliage and the trees and the plants has, have all grown around some sort of water source. It's either a river or it's, it's a place where water floods after a storm and they grow down their roots deep there. And they seem to flourish and be green because they're planted where? Next to the streams of water. See, I mean, in my house, we are a a family that goes to church. That's just the way it is. Like, if you are living under my roof, you getting up and you come into church. We're just going to have to talk about it later. You know what I'm saying? There is no choice. We want to be planted in the house of the Lord. And we want to be, now they might not know it. Your kids might not know it. The other family members might not know it. And you might not be able to force them to be a part of it. But what they will see is this family. Hear me. When they go and they see what's happened to you, when you've been planted and rooted in God's house, when you've been like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. Fruit is not for the tree. Apple trees just don't eat apples. The fruit on the tree is for others around. And so the others that see you, maybe you have a spouse that's not coming to church and you really want them here. Let your life shine brightly. Let them see the fruit that's come from your life and they will want the same thing. Who doesn't want to flourish, amen? Who doesn't want to have all the benefits of what it means to serve God? Good roots and to be in his house. Good roots produces good fruit. 
You got good roots down deep, you'll have good fruit. So it's kind of simple. It's, it's like this iPhone. I can, oh good, my Amazon's coming in. My Amazon delivery, I can see that on my phone. But anyways, <laughs> um, uh, it's delivered now. Uh, anyways, so this phone ha- is designed to be a part of a very specific power source. It has the ability to do a lot of things. Like I can text, I can call, I can do email, I can connect on social media, I could buy things, I can do all those, I can send money. There's a lot of capacity here, a lot of potential. But unless it's connected to the power source, nothing. It's just going to sit there like a paperweight. And so I could say, well, I'll go dip it in gasoline because sometimes we have this idea of how we're going to make our lives right and good and, and have this kind of family we're talking about to flourish in life. We say, I'll just figure it out. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be really involved over here, and I'm going to do these things. And some of those things are good and fine, but they can't replace the true power source in your life. So I could, I could say, here's this iPhone. Well, I'm just going to go dip it in gas and see if that works. Is that going to work? No, that's not going to work. I get to go, well, let me find some wires and hook it up to a AA battery. Is that going to work? Of course not. That's not going to work either. What's the one thing? As soon as I get that cord and I plug it into its power source, then the phone is able to live up to all its capabilities, potential, find its purpose, find its meaning, and flourish. Amen? Amen. Same thing for you and I. In our lives, we are called to be connected to the power source, which is the church. I mentioned it earlier because we talk about the power source as the Holy Spirit. But when was the Holy Spirit poured out upon the church? They were all assembled. Somebody say assemble. Like, you know, assemble. I just think of young guns. Regulators, they, they come together and they assemble. And we do that on Sundays and other days during the week. We have men's groups and, and women's groups and, and all sorts of things happening during the week. Coffee and confessions, it's, it's like a virtual family that we have during the week. And so we all continue to connect and be one with one another. And we are tapped into the power source in that very moment. But until we're connected continually to that power source, we won't have what we need. Now, here's the thing. Uh, my, my, I mentioned I was going to touch this earlier. So in 1996, I'd been with God a couple of years. I was plugged into my youth group, and uh, I was serving there. And uh, after I, I was just attending for a while, and then I became a leader in the youth group. And so we had this big camp coming up, and it was at Living Word. And this big camp was coming up over in San Diego at a place called Oak Bridge, which was a young life camp. And we were all pumped about it. It was great. Now, I had seen my wife around the church, you know, Living Word. It was Living Word Mesa at the time. And it was, it was kind of a big, big place, you know. Um, There's a lot of people around. So I kind of had seen her, and I'm like, girl, you got it going on. I didn't say that to her, but I'm like, I need to meet and talk to her somehow, some way. And so she didn't come a lot, but when I saw her, I was interested, obviously, And so uh, I'm so thankful for this because she had graduated uh, high school. So she was already out of the house. And so, excuse me, she was not out of the house. Her mom just corrected me. She was not out of the house. She was not out of the house, but she was was coming to church occasionally, and she didn't want to go on this trip. She's like, okay, I've been around their youth group. I heard it. I don't want to go. And her mom said, no, I really think you need to go. And she said, but no, I don't want to go. Now, she's already graduated, could have easily said no. I was a leader in the youth group, kind of out of the youth group, but just around in the perimeter as a leader. So I can remember seeing that day, we were all loading onto the vans, and I saw Christy pull up. I didn't even, I don't even think I knew her name right then. But I'm just like, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I've been waiting for. Her showing up and coming on this, that's going to be perfect. And notice as she approached the van, her mom was kind of pulling her by the arm, (laughs) kind of like dragging her along. And she, they had a conversation. I'm like, please get on the van. Please get on the van. Please get on the van. And she did. And see, I found out later that she didn't want to go, but her mama, hello, thank God for godly mamas. There's a reason that we honor our parents, by the way. There's a reason that we submit to that leadership. And so she said, okay, I'll go. Finally, she, she got on the van because her mom said, you are going whether you like it or not. I feel you need to be on this trip. So... We're on the trip. We're at the camp. This guy preached. It was a great message. And at the end of the service, I come up along with some other leaders as, as a, a, a leader in the church, a prayer leader. Just like we had prayer partners today, but it was across the front. Of the, and there's a big crowd, and everybody's going through and getting ministered to. And everybody's up at the front. 
and I'm just going through and just minding my business and praying for people. And it's almost suddenly like the Red Sea parted. <laughs> All these people moved and someone literally ushered Christy up to the front and right in front of me out of nowhere. And so we're just sitting there looking at each other. And then here's the thing. The prayer that she had that day, what she needed to agree with, was she was dating somebody else <laughs> at the time. She was in a relationship she knew she shouldn't have been in. And here's the thing. She wanted, she wanted God to do this change, and, and she comes in front of me. And so as she tells me, that's my prayer. I want you to pray with me about that. I, like, I, I'm getting a word from God right now. <laughs> and it's me. I'm the word. <laughs> Literally me. <laughs> and I didn't say that, but I did pray with her and the rest is history. What would have happened if she didn't go to church? If you don't stay planted and rooted in the house, in the church, no matter where you go in life, be planted and rooted in God's house, she would have missed out on purpose and destiny. Actually, we wouldn't be here today, most likely, if it wasn't for her mama making her be a part of the church family that day. Now, Christy loved church and she got in and it was good, but she needed that nudge that day. And I thank God for those nudges. Gosh, I think about some others. We had a guy walking by our house, our church, excuse me, one uh, morning I was through, walking down the sidewalk and, and for whatever reason I was drawn to him. We started chit-chatting a little. He came around the fence, came into the office, started ministering to him. I found out he was an addict and he was dealing with a heroin addiction. And so I was able to talk to him. We, thank God, praise God. We led him to the Lord right there. He started coming to the church, but I realized we needed to get him connected somewhere. So we got him connected to church on the street in downtown Phoenix. And so he went there, he got in rehab. And about a year later, he comes back in one day and says, you won't even believe what God's done in my life. The addiction's broken. My life has changed. He had a job. He looked like a new guy, all because of the church that's right here. Amen. That's the way it happens. I think of another guy. His name's Henry. Um, recently he had... Uh, COVID and he had some complications due to COVID. But not only that, he had a stroke while he was driving his car one day. And he actually hit a light pole head on in his car. And my niece happened to be driving by right as this happened and took pictures of the whole thing. And he's ushered off to the hospital. We heard about it. And immediately I called, as soon as I, I, I could get there, I called the wife and I said, what's going on? And they, I said, where is he? He said, he's over here at this hospital. And so I was ha happened to be taking my daughter for a practice right next door to that hospital. I said, I'll be there right now. I'll be there in just a couple minutes. Went in, gathered the family, and we just attacked hell. We just went after hell. We went after what the enemy was trying to do, and we spoke life over his body. We, we asked God, of course, we proclaimed healing over him. And guess what? I just, just this last week, that was weeks and weeks back, just this last week, I got a call from Henry, and he said, I am healthy, I'm whole, I'm in therapy right now, I'm getting fixed up, man, God's doing it. It was a complete miracle. Complete miracle. He was in the house. You know, it's funny, my brother Mark, he, um, my brother Mark, he met a girl, Holly, and at the time, Holly wasn't going to church. They're the lead pastors at Living Word Scottsdale. We were with them this last Wednesday. We combined and had a good service up there. Um, and he met his wife. He was actually five years younger than her, and he was 18 years old, and she was like 23. Except when he met her, he lied about his age. <laughs> he said, no, I'm, I don't know what he said, 22, 21, or something like that. I don't know how he got away with that. He had a baby face. I don't understand. But so he lied about his age and she didn't find out till later on about that. But one thing he didn't lie about, as they continued in relationship, he told, him that, he told her this. He said, I want you to know that my life is about Jesus and really my life is about church. If you wanna be with me, his words, if you wanna be with me, you need to be in church with me. Literally what he said. Yeah, come on, praise him, come on. We gotta clap, let's clap, let's go. That's exactly the way it is for you and I. We, we, we hold up that standard. We hold up that, that value that we're, when you're planted and you're rooted in God's house, you're gonna flourish. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not only there to see the miracles, we're there to be with each other when things don't go the way that we hoped. When things, for whatever reason, we have questions, maybe we lost somebody, somebody 
is no longer with us. We've had some of that happen even this year. And that's why I say that the church is a very, very important place because as Proverbs says, a brother in Christ is there for the trouble, for the adversity. We need to lean on each other, lean into each other. There's healing when we take time to mourn with each other, cry with each other. You know, we had, I finished with this today. There was a guy who went to our church a while back. His name was Dario. And Dario, I would run into, I met him through a mutual friend and we didn't know each other at all. Found out he was a Christian. He was kind of away from God. But uh, I talked to him that day and then I didn't think anything of it. I thought I'd never see him again. For whatever reason, guys, I met him and saw him at places wherever I went for months after that. I'm not even joking. It was like three or four times a week that I would run into Dario. I'd be at QT and I'd go in the store and there he was. I'd be over here going to fries and I'd walk in and there he was. I'd be over here at Taco Bell. There he was. And finally, we were just laughing about it. We're like, ah, I don't know, man. I promise I'm not following you. <laughs> I just, I think what I'm supposed to do though is I need to invite you to church. So I invited him to church. He reluctantly, after a few weeks, came in. He gave his life to the Lord, got back involved in church. And then he realized because God had touched him so much, he needed to sow back into the church. And so he got involved in the children's church. And so many times the ministries that we get involved in, these ministries we're, we're looking for to be handed to us on a silver platter, those don't exist a lot of times. What God's called you to do inside of the church, you also inside of the church, we have to find a need. And it might not be defined, but you find a need and then you choose to do a ministry that's in existence or not and, and fill that need. It's exactly what Dario did. He said, I want to be a part of the church. He, he taught sometimes, but he was always there and he decided that his ministry to the kids of Living Word Gilbert was that he was going to make sure every single time, and we just were talking about this in our um, car with all the kids. We were going somewhere and we were all talking about Dario just reminiscing because he would celebrate all their birthdays. He just decided that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to every time I want them to know that they're cared for, that they're recognized and they're loved. And I want to be honest with you. That's what was missing in his life. He ministered from a place of need. He wanted to feel recognized. He wanted to feel loved. He wanted to feel welcomed. So rather than saying, well, I don't feel any of that here he decided what I'm looking for, I'm gonna give it away. And to this day, every, that was their children's church leader growing up, they remember Dario as the one that sowed into their heart and life as one of their main children's church leaders. Dario, unfortunately, um, a number of years back, he had a, a heart condition and went on to be with the Lord. And just a, a couple months right before he went home to be with the Lord, he, was, he went to our Bible college here, he was graduating. And as he was graduating, he brought his family and one of the people that he brought in to be a part of that graduation service was his sister. Now his sister had been away from God too. And the funny thing is, is that because of that night and because of her seeing Dario's life flourish because he was planted and rooted in the house of God, I talked to Melissa that night out in the courtyard and she gave her life, recommitted her life to Christ. And she said, I wanna to go to Bible college now, Melissa Guardado is our children's church director. Here to this day, she's carrying on the legacy that Dario started. She's planted and rooted in the house of God. And by the way, if your kids are here, they're in good hands. She is awesome. Fully committed to those kids, man. And it's an awesome thing. You know, we, we grow the fruit on our tree for others. And that's what God's calling you and I to be planted in the house. Yes, it's what's best for you, but it's also what's best for those around you, for your family, for you. In 2022, one of the things that we're doing is we're doing the LW Church Challenge. I've got this, it's a t-shirt. This LW Church Challenge right here, right here. This is what we're doing. And what we're asking you to do is commit to coming to church for 12 weeks in a row. Look, if you get a contagious virus, stay home and join us online. You're still a part of it. You're still a part of the challenge. You're all right. So if, I forgot to say that last week, but you're good. But generally, if you're just like wake up and you're just like, ah, I don't want to go to church today, push through that. 
Sometimes you need to just tell yourself what you're going to do. What's self-control, by the way? You telling, come on, somebody, I know you know. You telling you what you are going to do. I heard you. That's exactly what it is. Sometimes you say, I'm going to church. I'm getting committed. It's not about me today. See, when you're a part of a family, you say, it's not just about me receiving. Maybe I feel fine today. I don't feel like I'm spiritually malnourished. Sometimes we'll stay home because of that. But you know who I see the happiest in the church are the people that's serving. The people that are coming in, they're contributing to the family, they're growing in the word, they're getting involved, they're going to the different ministries throughout the week in the church. So get a part of this LW Church Challenge. Maybe even snap a picture uh, and get a part of it the LW Church Challenge, and that's what you use as a hashtag on social media. You can even use that when you're at church. And if you do that for 12 weeks, the first week of April, we're gonna have a t-shirt for you, and we're gonna celebrate with you that you are a person that is planted and rooted in God's house. And because of that, you are gonna flourish. Your finances are gonna go to new places. Your family's gonna go to new places. Your relationships are going to new places. You might even find somebody to marry right here in the church. You might find purpose and destiny. You might find a new calling. You might find your very meaning in life right here in the church family. Somebody praise him and give him praise. You never want to stop service without giving you an opportunity to know Jesus as Lord. So today, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I just want you to pray this prayer with me out loud. Say, dear God, I give you my life. I believe you are the Son of God. My life is yours. Be my leader from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe someone came to the Lord today.